Hi everybody, I'm Maxime Bonnier. I'm a senior developer advocate at MongoDB. I'm based in France. And today I want to talk to you about MongoDB, Java, and client-side field-level encryption. So in this uh, video, I will talk to you about what it is exactly, what, what is CSFLE, all the details and all the pieces you need to make it work. And I will show you an example using Java, a very basic tutorial and a very basic piece of code. So you can get started uh, quickly if you like. So first of all, what is CSFLE? CSFLE is one of many MongoDB security features you can use to protect your MongoDB uh, database. Um, so uh, as you can see, a database or any, any kind of database can be uh, attacked different, in different ways. You can have database privileges abused, network snooping, data theft, or direct access to the RAM, for example, in the database host with RAM scrapping or things like that. So uh, as you can see, CSFLE, the only type of security feature that protects you from all those different type of attacks. Uh, and of course, it doesn't mean that this is the only one you should use. You should use all of them, actually. You should implement uh, TLS, SSL, network uh, transport encryption. You should, uh, you should use encryption at rest. And of course, role-based access system, which is user password, etc. So you need all those features to have a complete set of uh, protection across uh, your MongoDB clusters. So you are protected from any type of uh, attack, basically. Uh, so let's see exactly what CSFLE is and what we need to make it work. So first of all, let, let's see a quick example so you can really represent in your head what it is. So in this example, it's just a, a way to access an encrypted document with a find, which is stored in MongoDB encrypted. So an encrypted document looks like this. So the document in the end is stored like this encrypted inside MongoDB. So as you can see, the SSN, the email on the mobile, they are binary entries and you can't read them. You basically, if you are a pirate and you steal that, you cannot do anything with this. Even if you steal the data encryption keys, you cannot use the data encryption keys to, to, to retrieve the real data that is hidden by uh, the encryption algorithm. Unless you have the customer master key. The master key encrypts the data encryption keys. They are all hidden and managed in the key uh, management system in the CMS. Uh, so if you don't have the master key, you basically cannot read anything. That's the key of this whole system. So in here, if we, we go through the, uh, the algorithm of how a, a document is retrieved, you can see that the user sends a find command with the, the uh, SSN it's looking for. And then this uh, field is encrypted using the master key and the data encryption key. We send this data encrypted. So when it leaves the MongoDB driver, uh, it's already encrypted. So on the network, in the RAM, in everywhere on MongoDB side, it's already encrypted. We look for this encrypted value in the database. We find this document and we, we return this document to the client once it has been decrypted by the MongoDB driver. To be precise, it's actually decrypted by libmongocrypt, which is a, a companion library that you find uh, near the driver and in inside the driver directly. Um, cool. So let's see. So I talked about keys a bit, right? So let, let's see exactly what I mean by that. So those keys you have, so I mentioned two types, right? You have uh, data encryption keys, also known as DEC, Okay, they encrypt the field directly in your documents. You have the customer master keys. Uh, you can have several, but usually you have one. The master key encrypts the data encryption keys. This is like the master password, if you like. Without this, you cannot do anything. So that's also why you don't. You, it's not recommended to store your uh, customer master key or keys uh, near your server, near your driver, near your application backend your what we call the client in this solution. Um, so that's why we recommend to use key management systems, also known as TMS. Uh, you can host that in Amazon, in uh, GCP, Azure, in different places. You can also manage your own if you like, uh, but usually we recommend to use those for extra security measures. And finally, we have the key vault collections, which is where we store the data encryption keys. The data encryption keys are stored in the key vault collection uh, encrypted. So that's why I was saying that the data encryption key is not enough to be able to read the documents. You need the associated 
customer master key to be able to decrypt the data encryption keys so you can finally decrypt the documents using those data encryption keys. So let's see exactly. So I have an example, right, in Java. I want to show you some snippets, you know, of this before uh, I actually execute the code and we dive in the code. So let's see exactly what those parts, you know, are in, in my database. I have a local database running right now. So let's see what it looks like. My documents, uh, in my example, I have two, two persons, Bobby and Alice, and they both have one document and medical records that I want to keep safe. Um, so they both have one data encryption keys that is associated to them, right? For each document, so there is one data encryption key for Bobby and one for Alice, and each key encrypt their own document. That's how I designed this system. You can totally choose a different way to, to organize your uh, master keys, data encryption keys, and finally documents and fields. It's totally up to you, but that's how I chose to do that here, to be GDPR friendly. Um, because that's my example, if you read the blog post that is associated to this video. So um, here you see the encrypted documents that I have in my collection. And here you can see, so just for fun, I, uh, I uh, inserted this document also like the Bobby document in clear, just so you see the difference, right? That would be a document completely in clear in my database. So here, for example, I already abused my right as an admin to, to read some private information about that person, right? I know now his blood type, which I'm not supposed to know. And I know also that this person, for example, has a bad hurt, which I'm not supposed to know. So, so that's an example of, you know, how privileges can be abused, you know, to extract, to extract information and these kind of things. Um, so ideally it should be like this in, data, in the database. And to do that, we need data encryption keys, which are stored, I told you, in the vault. And the vault is for me right here. It doesn't have to be in the same uh, MongoDB cluster. It can be stored elsewhere. But I chose, you know, for simplicity, I chose to store them next to each other in the same um, MongoDB deployment. And here you can see a data encryption key. As you can see here is a key material. It's a binary uh, 64 format and uh, it's completely, I can't read it, like it, I can't use it like this. I, the only way to use this is to use the master key to encrypt this key and then I can use it. Also, you note that here I have a key alt names and it's Bobby, right? Uh, Alice key, it's not here because in the example I removed this key actually to prove that once the key is removed, I actually cannot decrypt the document anymore, which proves that the document is secured and completely unusable once I have forgotten a key, which is GDPR friendly, which is a right to be forgotten in GDPR. And uh, here you see, so this key is associated to Bobby, right? So I know that this key here is related to Bobby. So anything I want to read or write for Bobby, I basically need to use this key. All right. Uh, so let's carry on our little story. Uh, we have, so now data encryption keys and customer master, master keys which encrypt the data encryption keys. We have a key vault and a key management system. Uh, let's talk a bit more about the key management system for a second. So I told you we have several supported systems. Uh, so here you can see Amazon, uh, Azure, uh, Google uh, Cloud Platform. Uh, you can use also um, the K K KMIP and the local uh, key provider, which is what I'm going to use in this example for the sake of simplicity as well. Um, so the key MS is responsible for two things, create and store your customer master key and keep them safe and create and encrypt your data encryption keys. So we will see that as well in the code and how I do that. Okay. Um, one more thing before we jump in the code, uh, MongoDB provides two ways to encrypt and decrypt the documents. One is called the automatic encryption. And this is part of MongoDB Atlas and MongoDB Enterprise Offer. In this example, I'm not using this. I'm just using the uh, explicit encryption that you can see uh, mentioned here. So I'm not using um, this part here, which, this, which was called MongoCrypt D. And now it has been replaced, actually it's being replaced actively by this, which is called the automatic encryption shared library, right? Uh, 
Um, so this is how you write a document with the automatic encryption. So basically, in my example, in the code you're going to see in a minute, I'm not using the automatic part here because it relies on a JSON schema. So basically, in this JSON schema, which is on the client side, you provide a JSON schema and you say, okay, this field is going to be encrypted with this key, this field with this one, and with this algorithm, with this algorithm, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Once you have this, this automatic encryption shared library is capable of encrypting automatically the fields for you in the document. And as vice versa, when you retrieve those documents, it's capable of decrypting them. Uh, the decryption part is actually fully automated already. So you don't need to have this in place uh, to, to decrypt the documents. It's already automated. And I'm using actually this automatic decryption uh, in the example I provide. So only this part here uh, is part of MongoDB Atlas and MongoDB Enterprise Advanced. Uh, for um, my example, I'm actually not using that, so I'm compatible with MongoDB Community Edition, right? Um, okay, uh, just for the record, all the code you're going to see here uh, today in my example is available in this repository on my GitHub, on the MongoDB uh, Dash Developer uh, organization, and it's part of the Java Quick Start repository. The piece of code I'm going to show you today is located in the source main uh, folder, quick start, and there is a folder dedicated to CSFLE. So uh, let's jump right in the code and you can see uh, we are going to visit those uh, three classes. Um, all right, so let's see uh, my example. So first of all, console decoration is just for the decoration. So you won't see a lot of that. And I have two classes. One is really my main uh, example. Uh, so I set up a few things and you have a demo, um, which is really my whole main thing, right? That's my main. I have a demo and I run things one by one. So we are going to go through uh, all that in a minute. And um, what else? And I have a connection helper. Uh, so these are just helping helper functions that I use in my demo uh, to simplify the code from my demo so I can factorize, reuse, etc., etc. So of course, we're going to see a, a bit of that as well. Uh, so let's dive in. First of all, let, let's execute the code to see what's, what's happening and, and what, what is actually, uh, you know, what, what the code is doing. So let's roll back up and see step by step what's happening. So the first thing you see that I need is the master key. So uh, it tells you that an existing master key was found in the master key uh, .txt file. So here in my project, I actually have a master key that is created. If I open the file, you can see it, it's a binary file. I cannot read it like this, right? Um, this file, if it does not exist in your project yet, if you check out the repository and execute the code, it will create a brand new master key file for you with a brand new master key, secret master key, of course. Uh, which you are supposed to secure a lot. And uh, it's not very secure if it's just right here uh, laying, you know, in my, uh, um, you know, in my, in my server, you know, uh, next to the, next to the code. It's like uh, leaving the keys, you know, uh, on the car. So you don't really want to do that. Uh, if you get, you know, hacked, if they can steal the key along with the code and with everything to access the database, uh, basically you, you gave everything. So, so that's why we say uh, it's better to use a key, uh, key MS, a key management system. Uh, okay, so I retrieve a key and you see that I have now a master key, which I can print because it's a bunch of bytes. So I can, uh, I can just print my master key. Then initialization. So I need a few things before I do anything. First, I need to create my key management system. So my local key management system for the sake of simplicity. I need to create two MongoDB clients. Uh, one is called the encryption client, that's the one I use to uh, create uh, my um, data encryption keys and store them in the vault. And then I need a MongoDB client, which is CSFLE aware and is capable of doing automatic decryption, not the automatic encryption, right? Remember, uh, because I don't want to use MongoDB Atlas or Enterprise Advanced in this example, I'm just using the explicit encryption which means I, it relies on me to encrypt the keys in the document, right? If I don't do that, they can be written in clear in my database. Finally, I'm just cleaning the server because it's a tutorial, so I'm cleaning everything. I'm removing the vault, I'm removing the, 
the user uh, collection. I'm removing everything so it's clean for the next execution. Okay, the first thing I need here is to uh, create a key alt name with unique index. What does that mean? If I come back to MongoDB Atlas for uh, MongoDB uh, Compass, sorry, for a second, uh, you can see in my vault. So I told you about this key alt name, right? So it's a way for me to identify uniquely my key, right? I don't want two keys with Bobby, else I would not, I would not know which one to use uh, to encrypt and decrypt my fields for uh, my uh, Bobby person. Um, so to make sure, first of all, that I can access and retrieve this key easily from the vault, I need an index to make it fast, but I also need to make it unique. So I make sure that there is no other key with Bobby in them, you know, in, in this array of uh, key alt names. So for this, in the index, I have indeed, uh, so it's created in the code directly, right? Uh, I have uh, an index, which is unique and partial. Uh, so as you can see, I have also a filter to make sure that if there is no key alt name provided, then I don't index this document because I cannot retrieve uh, with this uh, key, right? So it's just, uh, it's not supposed to be, you know, useful, but just in case it's here. Okay, so once I have this uh, key alt name with unique index, I make sure that I can use my data encryption keys correctly. And I, I don't, even if I do a mistake and, and try to write and create another key for Bobby, it will be refused by the server, by the MongoDB cluster, I mean. So um, then we can create two data encryption keys, one for Bobby and one for Alice. Finally, we can insert two documents, one for Bobby and one for Alice, in my example. So they are stored in the encrypted database users. And you see those two documents in the, in the collection. And finally, I can retrieve Bobby's document. You can see I can print it uh, in, the, in the console here in clear, right? So it means that I have done correctly the decryption part because it's definitely encrypted in the database and not in my console. Same for Alice. And in the end, just to prove that it's working correctly, I remove Alice key uh, from, the data, from the vault, which is what you see here. Alice is gone. Her key is not here anymore. And uh, once the key is removed, uh, I recreate uh, the clients because there is a cache. So I don't, there is a, the data encryption keys are actually cached. So I don't want to use this cache, of course, here. I want to completely forget about that key. So I recreate just for uh, security the um, client uh, automat uh, with automatic dec decryption. And finally, I try to read again the document. And as you can see, I have uh, an error here. I have a try catch and I catch the, uh, the exception. And uh, I say that there was an exception in the lib mongo crypt and I was not able to uh, decrypt those fields anymore. So that's the whole example. So let's see now in the code exactly how it works. So let's jump back to the first uh, uh, big demo. So I create a few things here at the top, just so you are aware. So I create Bobby and Alice, just two strings. I create a few namespaces. So the encrypted namespaces, which is my encrypted DB users. I have the name for the master key file. I have my local for my local uh, key management system. And also I have deterministic and random, which are the two algorithms or I can use uh, for CSFLE. Uh, I'm gonna cover that in a second when we, uh, when we reach uh, the document and the encryption part. But just so you know, I have two algorithms, right? Deterministic and random. Also, you can see here the size of the master key, which is 96. Okay, cool. So, um, let's go in order and let's do now, we, we read the, the console, we read the output, so let's see how it was achieved. So first of all, I need to retrieve that uh, master key. So it's done here in generate, uh, I'm going to close this so you can see more code. Um, so you can see generate or retrieve master key from file. So let's access this piece of uh, code. If the file does not exist, then I create a new one and I save that master key to file just like this with a file output stream, nothing uh, really important, nothing cool. Generate master key. Uh, it's very simple actually to generate a master key, it's just like this. You do a, a new byte array and with a random, which is a new secure random in Java, uh, you, do, you use the next byte uh, method with the size of the key. 
uh, with sorry with the um, well with, with the sorry with the byte array initialized with the size of the key, and you get a new um, a new um, customer uh, master key, which is the one you saw in my um, in my log file here, right? You can see that. Uh, cool. So that's the master key part. That's how you get the master key and how you retrieve it from the file. Uh, then from my connection helper, so first thing here, I create, so once I have the master key, I can create my connection helper. And here in my constructor, the first thing I do is I generate three things. My KMS provider, my local KMS provider, my encryption client, and my Mongo client, the one that's capable of uh, sending documents and, uh, and reading and writing documents. Uh, so generate the KMS. It's very simple. It's just uh, an hash map. It's just a map like this. So it's a map string which maps to a new map because you can actually use different type of uh, KMS in the same system. So I can use local along with other things. And I can also have several keys um, in my, um, in my uh, map here. So uh, just, just like this. So you need to create an, an, uh, an object like this. So it's a hash map with a, uh, an hash map in it. And so for me, it's local with key and points to finally my master key. Okay, so that's my local KMS, okay, which is not again recommended for production environment. Okay, next I can create my client encryption. So create my client encryption, it's not very complicated. Uh, I'm gonna unzoom a little so you can see as much as possible. I need to uh, provide the connection string for MongoDB. So here it's just MongoDB uh, localhost. Then I need to, so the client encryption is responsible for creating the data encryption keys and retrieving the data encryption keys, right? So uh, this is done with, well, by providing the configuration for the key vault, okay? If the key vault is stored in another uh, place, okay, that's the place it's gonna be stored. You have the um, namespace of the key vault and the key MS provider, and you just build and that's it. You just create the client like this, right? So once you have that client, you can create the other one, the Mongo client. So this one is the one you are familiar with. Okay. Uh, it's almost normal, except that this time you have to pass an extra uh, parameter, which is the auto encryption settings. That's the usual settings you do to pass the connection string. And you add this one here. And this one here contains my vault again, uh, my uh, KMS provider, and this option here, which is very important, the bypass auto encryption, which I talked about. Uh, by saying that, I say that I don't want to use uh, the these tools, right? Remember, this automatic part with the JSON schema and the MongoCrypt D, or now the most recent version, the automatic encryption shared library, right? Uh, this is the option for MongoDB Community Edition, right? So by this, I mean that I'm going to use the uh, the explicit encryption instead of the automated encryption. Okay. So again, I compile all these, pass the options, and create my client. And that's all I need for now. Uh, back to my code in the client cell field level encryption demo. Uh, then I just clean the cluster. So this function is just silly. It's just a drop the vault and the encrypted uh, collection. So that, that's it. I'm just cleaning the whole cluster for the next, uh, you know, next run. So I'm clean for the next execution. Um, okay, next uh, I can so retrieve my encryption, my client. So I have encryption and client and uh, looks like I can also retrieve my vault and my user collection. Okay, so here I'm just initializing my vi my variables. Then I can create my index, the unique index I need for the um, the key vault. So it's just done like this. I'm gonna get rid of this so you can see better and zoom a little more. So you see I'm using key vault create index. So I'm creating an ascending index on the key alt names. You remember. This is this, this array here uh, in the in the vault. And I pass the option, so the index is unique. And with the partial filter on, you know, exist 
key alt names. Great. Then I can create my data encryption keys. So here I just do this like that. So I pass the encryption client and encryption client, I can use the method called create data key, which needs to pass the uh, local. So I have to say which uh, key MS I'm going to use. So here it's the local one. And I'm going to use, uh, so create a key for Bobby and create a key for Alice. Okay. So here I'm just creating the key alt uh, name, uh, which is just, you know, the uh, an option for the key alt name, which is a list of all the alternative names I can provide if I want to. And just in here, I just need Bobby and Alice. Okay, and I just print them in the in the output. And that's what you saw when I executed this. And by the way, those IDs here, so this ID here, for example, E19 something, that's the one you find here, E19 something, that's your UUID that you find to identify uh, uniquely your um, data encryption key uh, in your vault. Okay, next, next I can insert my encrypted documents for Bobby and Alice. So let's see what we have here. So as you can see, I'm creating two documents, one for Bobby, one for Alice. I use my collection insert many uh, function. So I can insert a list of Bobby and Alice and retrieve the size and print a uh, number of documents have been inserted which is what we see as well here, two documents have been inserted, right? Um, let's see how I create the document for Bobby, for example, and it, it, it's exactly the same theme for Alice. It's actually both in the same screen. Um, so for Bobby, you can see, for example, for the phone, I use the encryption client and I use the encrypt method this time. And uh, I create a new bison string, which contains a phone number. And I use the algorithm deterministic Bobby, just so you, so you can see. Deterministic, it's an option, new encrypt, encrypt option, deterministic, uh, with the key alt name of the key. Um, so by this, with this algorithm here, with this option, I say which key I want to use and which algorithm I want to use. Uh, and so now we reach the part where I need to explain uh, why we have deterministic for the phone number, for example, and random for the blood type. So um, this is a, a, a security layer, uh, just in case you want to prevent some uh, sort of attack you can have on encrypted data. Let's say that I use a deterministic way to encrypt the blood type, for example. Blood types, there is a very limited cardinality, right? There is like, I think, eight different type of blood types in the for the humans, you know. So um, if I use a deterministic algorithm and if I use the same key to encrypt all my documents, which is not the case here, by the way, but just in case you use only one key to encrypt all the fields by default for the blood type, it means A plus for everybody will be equal to the same value in all the documents. So that means that if I have the frequency of you know, the different blood types in a population, then it means I can retrieve my entire database and do a, a frequency analysis of that field. And I can just match the different uh, fields with, oh, so this field is 20%, this field is 20%, so this encrypted field much must match A+, plus, for example. And this is 15%, so this must be B+, plus, for example. Uh, so this is a type of fre frequency attack that you can do when you have a low cardinality on, um, on a field, like, like blood type, for example, uh, but not on a telephone number, for example, because this is very likely uh, that all your telephone numbers in your database will be unique enough. Uh, so maybe not unique, but unique enough. So you cannot do a frequency attack on a telephone number, for example. Same for a social security number, for any type of identifier for a user, for example, an email or something like this. They will all be almost different in your database enough that you cannot be uh, attacked by this kind of attack. Uh, so that's why I can use deterministic for the phone, but I have to use random for the blood type just to be safe. It also means that because I use the random algorithm here for the blood type, it means that I cannot uh, re uh, query this document by blood type. Because if I try to uh, re-encrypt this blood type with the key from Bobby, 
it means I'm going to get a different value. And if I look for this value in the database, it won't exist, right? So if I use a random algorithm, I can only decrypt that value, but I cannot re-encrypt and recreate that value, which means I cannot query by that value. Um, that being said, there is a new thing that is being released uh, currently uh, in uh, the most recent version of MongoDB uh, 7.0. CSFLE was uh, first released in 4.2, so it's not new. We are right now at MongoDB 7.0 as I'm shooting this video. And uh, there is a new uh, thing, which is queryable encryption. So if you want to know more about this, it's not part of this video, but check out queryable encryption because you're going to learn a lot more about uh, this topic. It's a new way to encrypt and decrypt your fields, basically. Um, cool. And finally, you have my medical entry. So test, hurt, result, bad for Bobby. So of course, I want to keep this very, very safe and very, very private. So for this, of course, there is no point for me to uh, query, for example, by, by this uh, field. I, if I query Bobby's document, I'm probably going to retrieve by its name or maybe its phone number. Definitely not going to look for Bobby by its blood type or it, its his medical um, entry, for example. So um, so here I encrypt again the field, which is a list of uh, elements, the list of the Bizant document, it's a sub document in my object. Uh, if you don't remember, I can show you uh, the document in clear. As you can see here, it's an array of, doc of sub documents and I have a test and result uh, and some documents, right? So uh, I encrypt all this with the random algorithm again. And same for Alice, she doesn't have a medical entry, but that's fine. She has a blood type and she has a phone number, deterministic, random, same thing. In the end, when I retrieve those documents, you can see they are printed here in clear for Alice and for, uh, for Bobby first and Alice uh, second. Cool. Okay. Uh, next. So, so now I've inserted the documents. Now I can read Bobby. So how do I do that? Here I chose to query uh, Bobby by his phone number. So again, I re-encrypt the value provided by the client. I re-encrypt with the same encryption key, the same data encryption key, and the same algorithm, of course. And then I can just run a normal user collection find equal phone equal to my encrypted value. Uh, retrieve the first value, uh, print to JSON, and that's what you see in the uh, console output. Uh, so that's how you can query by an encrypted field using the explicit encryption from CSFLE. Uh, cool. And for Alice, uh, I went with a different direction. So Alice, I have a try catch because the second time I'm going to try this, it's going to fail. That's the final exception and error I have at the end because I don't have the key anymore. So uh, here I just do a normal find by Alice by a bar name. And as you can see, it works as well, of course, because her name is not um, uh, encrypted in the database, right? It's, it, it's in clear text, so I can just do a normal find query uh, using MongoDB. Um, cool. And finally, uh, to finish the example here, uh, I remove Alice key, uh, the so data encryption key. So for this, I use uh, the uh, vault collection. I do a delete one on uh, the key alt name, Alice. And I count how many keys have been uh, removed. Looks like a, a little typo here. Uh, okay, and of course, her key was removed. Oops. And so that's the part where there is a, a cache, just so you know. So we don't retrieve all the time all the data encryption keys because it would be, uh, it would be uh, uh, expensive for the server and for the client to always do those queries. So there is a cache on the client side because the data encryption keys don't change very, very often. Once you create it, it's supposed to stay for a while. Uh, so. Uh, I reset the cache here. Uh, usually you don't need to do that in production. It's just because it's a CD tutorial and I want to test that uh, if I delete the key, I cannot retrieve any more the document. That's what I'm doing here. I'm resetting the connection. And when I try again to read Alice document, uh, when I try to define here, the auto encryption, uh, the auto decryption algorithm fails because I'm missing the key from Alice. 
and so it fails it goes to a mongodb ex mongo exception and that's the error i get at the end in my uh, final uh, line in my console so that's it uh, you have the whole example here uh, it's uh, very easy to execute uh, the only thing you need to know is that the connection string is passed here at the top it's the very first line in the connection helper connection string and you can see that this is a connection string system property mongodb uri so if you look here at my configuration the way it's done this is just using uh, dash d um, so this is part of the um, uh, maven uh, options if i don't say uh, anything silly here it's part of the vm uh, parameters so dash d mongodb dot uri equal mongodb colon slash slash localhost slash okay so i'm just passing this like this of course here i could use mongodb atlas i could use any instance of uh, of mongodb i'm using java 17 for this example and that's that's really all i need to to start this uh, this example in the readme here um uh where is the readme readme is here uh up no yes no like this in the readme you have here all the different command lines so to start all the other um, quick start from this uh, repository and the one you are looking for for csfle is this one here at the bottom right so exec main class this and the dash d mongodb uri equal this and here you have an example with mongodb atlas it's if um, that's your your choice um cool and one last thing i want to show you uh, in the pom.xml so the pom.xml here, pretty simple. I'm not using a lot of things. I'm using the MongoDB sync driver, right? And I told you about libmongocrypt, which is the uh, companion library, which does all the encryption and decryption. This part here is mandatory to do CSFLE, okay? It's part of MongoDB Community Edition. You can import it, and that's free to use in the MongoDB Community Edition. Uh, again, the part that is not free and not free to use unless you are using MongoDB Atlas or you have the uh, MongoDB Enterprise Advanced uh, version is this part here, right? The automatic encryption shared library um, or this, uh, where is it? I lost it. Or the uh, MongoCryptD, but if you are using MongoCryptD, I highly recommend that you now uh, try to transition and move to uh, automatic encryption shared library. Uh, so that's it. I'm just using logback. There is a small logback configuration you can check out in the in the repository, and and that's about it. I have a um, few details here, but uh, nothing nothing major, right? That's really what I wanted to show you here is this uh, lib mongo crypt, which is in the mongodb crypt uh, artifact ID uh, in uh, Maven, right? Cool. Well. Thank you very much uh, if you listened to this entire video. Uh, I really liked presenting uh, uh, client-side field-level encryption to you today. I hope you learned something. Um, just so you know, uh, there is a second video that I'm shooting uh, very soon uh, for another repository that I did. Uh, so here. So this video here will be related to this blog post here, which is available in the MongoDB Developer, Sem uh, Developer Center. Uh, and I created also a new blog post called uh, how to implement client-side field-level encryption in Java with Spring Data MongoDB. And in this one, we're using Spring Boot, Spring Data, and this uh, blog post uh, provides a, some code in this repository here, um, which is way more production ready. In this one, I am using uh, the automatic encryption uh, using this automatic encryption shared library. Uh, I'm not using queryable encryption though, but the code that I provide is way more production ready, way more reusable. I'm using JSON schemas on the um, client side and the server side to ensure that the documents cannot be uh, written without encryption. And uh, yeah, so yeah, and the future, just a yeah, final note. Uh, the future uh, for um, CSFLE uh, is uh, with this um, 
so that's the main documentation of CSFLE, but the future is here, right? Uh, MongoDB's queryable encryption feature is available now in GA uh, with MongoDB 7.0 and later. So if you haven't, please check it out and have a look to queryable encryption, which is uh, part of CSFLE and kind of the future of CSFLE, if you want my opinion. Cool. So thank you very much for uh, everybody that listened to this video. Uh, have fun and see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.